Generation Y, those 20 to 30 year olds, they had it all, didn't they? They could do what they liked, be whatever they wanted to be. Jobs and opportunities were there for the taking, and it seemed the good times would never end. Then came the crunch, and what an almighty shock it was. Suddenly jobs disappeared, life was tough. Gen Y didn't know what hit them. But before the oldies start crowing, I told you so, remember this. These kids that we think are so spoilt also tend to be pretty imaginative, adventurous and resilient. So Charles Woolley went out to see if they have what it takes to survive the bad times. Even on the balmy Gold Coast, a cold wind is blowing through the lives of a generation who've only known sunshine. The economic storm is affecting all Australians, but it's young people at the beginning of their working lives who are hurting the most and who are totally unprepared. Well, I had a great childhood, actually. Just because it was so easy, there was no responsibility, you had everything handed to you. Um, and now, you know, you come out into the big world and you can't get a job, you know, that's when it sort of gets tough. 21-year-old Justine Sydenham came to the Gold Coast for work and sunshine, and this week at least, found neither. My name's Justine, I'm currently looking for a job. Still, she pounds the pavements every day, handing out her resume to prospective employers. Okay. Sorry at the moment I don't have anything, but I'll certainly take your resume yeah, and put it on for you. How does your day begin? You're serious about this, aren't you? I am serious. I wake up, you know, at 8, 9 o'clock. There's no point sleeping all day. Um, wake up, get straight on the internet. It's frustrating. I'm even happy to settle for a pub job and I can't even get that. Heaps of energy, heaps of attitude, get right into the camera, just wrapping to the lens of the camera. 25-year-old right. Julie really Dixon is a classic product of Generation Y, born after 1976. A motivated self-starter, convinced she had the world at her feet. And go for it. For her entire life, the economy had boomed. She got every job she ever wanted and, brimming with confidence, set out on her own a year ago to start a video production company. You've got to wear it like this. It's got to be just off the head and a bit to the side. That's it. Like that. And then do this. <laughs> West side. <laughs> it's not me. Julie may never make a rapper out of me, but initially her dream to make hip-hop videos was flourishing. Then the business lost its beat. As the global financial crisis hit, profits plummeted. Because you've had great success with the music video. That's right. It was on TV. It was on TV and we thought, fantastic, we were getting inquiries left, right and centre. People wanted music videos, people were loving our work and then it came crashing down. How hard is it to see your dream just fade away? I had no idea what a recession was, sort of what, what happened, how it can affect people. So, sort of, I guess I was like a horse with blinkers a little bit. I could be whatever I wanted to be. The jobs were there and now um, that's totally changed. They've had the, the wind knocked out of their sails in the confidence department now, big time. For a 53-year-old businessman like Mark Boris, millionaire founder of Wizard Home Loans, recession is nothing new. He spends a lot of his time these days introducing his Gen Y employees to the harsh realities of today's financial world. Well, suddenly I realise you're the patron saint of Gen Y. I mean, the place is full of them. Exactly. All under 30. Everybody under 30, put your hands up. Come on, put your hands up. What ah, you are, you are. It hit these kids hard. Unemployment for them is up 40%. Yeah, that's a bit like a summer. Suddenly, it just went bang, hit us, and we are gone. And, those, and the kids were shocked because they don't have any pathway after this. I mean, someone's got to set out a strategy for them to give them confidence. Otherwise, we're going to lose a whole generation. Well, about there is about 100k, but he gets up to 220 at the end there. 26-year-old Jason Cray looks set for a life in the fast lane, driven by a first-class honours degree in engineering and an impressive CV. 
Baker, his Australian-built race car won an international competition against more than a hundred university engineering schools. Now we're going to check all the stuff again. Pull the wheels off and the brakes. Jason was destined for big things, and then globally the motor industry collapsed, and with it, those high expectations. Have you got many mates in the same situation? Yeah, quite a few actually. Yeah. It'll People who've done the same degree as me, and yeah, just n now they're all doing other sorts of random jobs, factory work and trades and things like that. Not not doing the job that they have a qualification for. Today, this highly qualified young man works in an assembly line into the night, sorting pills in a pharmacy depot. That first-class honours degree is gathering dust. But with nearly 200,000 Gen Yers out of work, at least Jason has a job. Well, it's not exactly flexing you, is it? <laughs> no. So I think I've changed my mind. I was thinking how honourable it was that you were doing this rather than going to Centrelink. But now, just between you and me, I'm thinking maybe Centrelink would be an easier option. Yeah, it'd be easier, but I don't know. I'd... I'd get pretty bored sitting at home all the time, so... You get to wear a great little jacket, though. Exactly. I mean, how good do I look? Yeah, you look terrific. <laughs> yeah, it's sad, but it's probably, at the end of the day, a good experience for him, too. Um, and, you know, it'll make him tougher and make him far more resilient. You can't help worrying about kids like this. I mean, after all, that's a generation who have to pay our pensions. We should all be concerned, shouldn't we? Well, they're the economic heartbeat of our future. We need these young people to be out there using their ability, their energy their, uh, and their work ethic and, and be able to put in the hours that they can put in and all the flexibility they have. We need them in there at the right price to be able to make this country be more productive.